Well, hello there, Edina High School students. Welcome to our first um, distance lesson. Um, some of you might be in class here, some of you might be at home, but I'd like you to think about an apple. Just think about an apple for a minute. What does it feel like? What do you think about when you think about an apple? Do you think about a teacher? Do you think about a tree in your backyard? What about the taste of the apple? What does it taste like? Do you like the taste of apple? Why do you like the taste? Or why don't you like the taste if you don't like the taste of an apple? These are some really, really basic questions in psychology. And they're some of the basic questions that um, psychologists were trying to answer in the early years of psychology. So my goal today is to talk to you about the beginnings of the discipline of psychology. And it has become a massive field encompassing all different kinds of branches that one can imagine. And it is also one of the four subtests for the Medical College Admissions Test. Psychology is a really, really important study. Uh, so let's take a look at where this began. It actually is uh, a fairly new discipline and compared to some other things like um, even medicine, which goes back thousands of years. Uh, the roots of modern psychology um, actually go back to about the 19th century. First of all, we have philosophers asking some big questions, some fundamental questions about humanity. First of all, do we have free will or is our path in life uh, determined for us by our parents, our genetics, the neighborhood we're born in? Or are we free to make decisions at will? This is a fundamental question that psychologists still argue about. And some are highly deterministic and they believe that it really doesn't matter what you do. What's going to happen is going to happen. Whereas others really embrace the free will um, approach. And then, of course, there is a constant question of nature versus nurture. Are we a product of our genetics, our height, our weight, um, some predispositions for talents and tendencies, um, or are we a product of our environment? And the only way we can really study this, and we'll talk about this later, but the only way it can really be studied is through identical twins who are reared apart. And uh, there are some really uh, important studies that were done here at uh, the University of Minnesota. It's called the Minnesota Twins Study, nothing to do with the baseball team. And um, we'll look at that later in the course. Meanwhile, in bi biology and physiology, empiricism was really trying to take um, the look at physiology or biological biology from a scientific approach, making sure that we use the scientific method and um, that that lends more validity to whatever it is that you're studying. In psychophysics, um, there were people studying reaction times. For example, uh, if I say your name and throw something at you and you catch it, um, is that different than if I just throw something at you? Um, also, uh, measuring uh, response to sounds and uh, other kinds of stimuli. So another really, really important contributor to early psychology was um, uh, Charles Darwin. Now, when we think of Charles Darwin, we think of evolution and natural selection. Psychologists are not focused so much on evolution, but they are focused on natural selection, those traits that have been passed from generation to generation that have allowed our species to survive. So then what happened is in 1879, a man named Wilhelm Wundt opened the first um, psychology lab in Leipzig, Germany. Now, he is considered to be the father of psychology. Many people think it's Sigmund Freud. That's who they um, associate with psychology. But in this lab of his, he um, measured reaction time. So you've maybe done this where you've had a dollar bill, for example, and you try to drop it through. And you can, you can grab it. You can, you can, you can catch it, right? Um, but if someone else does it, you're not able to do it. Because that's because it takes a little bit longer for a year to get the message to your, from your brain, your occipital lobe, where you see the dollar go down between your fingers um, and the motor cortex, which actually grabs the dollar bill. So they looked at things like that. They also looked at our mental awareness, thoughts, images, feelings, and all of the connections that went along with that. 
Edward Titchener was a student of Wilhelm Wundt's and he founded a school of psychology known as structuralism. Structuralism is the what of conscious experience. So he would basically take, uh, give you something like that apple and have you talk about all of the conscious experiences that the apple conjures up in your mind. So perhaps you um, have, uh, you, you hold the apple, you say it's red, it's firm, it's um, soft, or not soft, maybe slippery, um, that your grandma has an apple tree in her yard, etc. So basically what uh, Titchener was trying to do was identify the most basic elements of our mental experience and, and looking at how they form sort of a mental web of connections. This method was called introspection or strained attention. Then comes along William James. Now, William James's work was extraordinary. He did suffer from bouts of depression, but he also um, founded a school of thought known as functionalism. So he was interested in the adaptive reasons for our behavior and thoughts. He was heavily influenced by Charles Darwin and uh, wanted to know, for example, if you had a positive experience with an apple, why? Well, maybe um, when you eat the apple, the sweetness is something. We use glucose in our body. We need glucose. We need that, that sweetness. So perhaps that's why we like an apple. Perhaps we've had a bad experience with an apple. Maybe we got sick after eating an apple and we don't even want to eat an apple anymore. Well, he would want to know why. Um, so that's the foundation of the functionalist approach. Uh, he published the first psychology text in 1890. This was a very comprehensive text that um, even some people to this day find to be useful. And he was interested in everything from child development um, to religion. He was really a philosopher um, in his heart, um, but he addressed a lot of um, psychological concepts as well. And his work laid the foundation later on for something we call evolutionary psychology. So the women of early psychology, um, the discipline was heavily dominated by men. And of course, in 1879 in the United States, women didn't even have the right to vote and were very limited in their options. Mary Calkins actually was a um, student of Professor William James at Harvard. She joined his class and, you know, it's kind of um, funny to think about this actually happening, but when she joined the class, all of the men dropped out. Um, James continued to tutor her, tutor her and they offered her a PhD from Radcliffe, a women's school, but would not give her the PhD from Harvard, even though she had done all the work at Harvard, had done all the exams at Harvard. And so she um, did not actually accept the PhD from uh, Radcliffe. So um, the person who actually is considered to be the first female um, PhD, or who actually is, is Margaret Fuller Washburn. Margaret Fuller Washburn um, got her PhD from Cornell in 1894, and she is known for writing a book called The Animal Mind, which is um, you know, looking at psychology through the lens of, of the mind. And um, she was also the second female president of the American Psychological Association. So those are some of the early foundations that you need to know about. And then we get to the definition of psychology. Now I talked about this in the introductory video, but if you didn't get it, here it is. It's systematic, it's scientific, and psychology studies both outward expressions of behavior and mental processes, what's going on in here, why you think the way you do, or even why you might unconsciously act in a particular way. The goals of psychology are to be able to describe, and we want to use non-judgmental terms in describing one's behavior or mental processes. So that's something that we're going to work on in class. We want to be able to explain behavior. Now here in the Twin Cities, um, one of the things I, I hope to talk about is what happened on 38th in Chicago. And I'm sure uh, you'd have to be like living under a rock not to know that there was major rioting that occurred in Minneapolis and cities around the country in the um, wake of the George Floyd um, killing. So, um, you know, we want to be able to explain that. Why did that dynamic occur uh, in that situation? Um, we can predict 
what might happen. And in this case, I think in the case that I was just talking about, it might not be hard to predict that there might be, um, might have been, and would be certainly a huge public outcry. And then to control, and by control, I don't mean control as in like mind control, but to try to help people to understand themselves and to enable them to make a better life for themselves. So, um, in conclusion, then, that is our basic introduction to history of psychology. And um, then uh, the next screencast, we'll be looking at perspectives in psychology. Thanks for your attention.